Hello, book clubbers. Welcome back. Oh, it's a big week. We've had a week off. Before that, we talked to Mr. Steven Erickson. So it's been a while since we've done a regular book club episode. We're so glad you're back with us to start a new novel. Woo! Meow, 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 meow. Midnight Tides. I'm Jeff Kanata. I'm here with Lana Bashinsky. Hi, Lana. Hello. Good morning. Excited to be back. It was a uh, beautiful, restful week off of preparing to do my taxes. So I'm really happy to be back in this. Oh, look at you doing your taxes in February like a good kid. Yeah. I wait that, until uh, April 14th. I have an LLC, so I have to file them before mm. March or it's over. So really, I'm doing it at the last possible second. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, like barely because it's a leap year, I really needed that extra day to like get the motivation. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing matters on leap day. You can do anything. There are no rules on leap day. Um, <laughs> we have... It's uh, the purge. What's uh, the purge? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we have... We have a brand new novel to dig into this week. I'm very excited to start uh, book five. We have the fifth novel already. Halfway through. The Tales from the Malazan Book of the Fallen by Stephen Erickson. This is Midnight Tides. But we always start each episode with a non-spoiler chat, a topic that lets folks that might not be caught up with us still hang out and talk about books. Uh, We have a fun one. Atlanta, why don't you introduce it this week? Uh, speaking of LLCs. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what do you file on your taxes? Our yeah, topic can this somebody, week is... <laughs> is so can somebody walk me through how to do my profit loss statement? It's really... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it, we were talking a bit before the show about, you know, we talk a little bit about reading, but bookstores and like favorite bookstores. And what I want to know, Jeff, is if you were to own your own bookstore. Yes. I want to know about the vibe. Paint me a picture of this shop you own in the future of imagination. I love it. My, 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 my dream bookstore. Um, my goodness. There's so many directions you can go with this, right? Cause there's part of me that loves like a quaint little hole in the wall place that has like really tall shelves and like ladders and mm-hmm. you, you, know, you kind of get lost in the, in the, the rows Binding. and columns. And you, you know, I kind of like that, it, the little hole in the wall shop that kind of feels European. And, but I also really love the big cavernous, awesome, you know, cool uh, place that's got multi levels. And, and there's a couple of places here in Denver like that, the tattered cover bookstores here in Denver that are really cool. They have these big wide open areas you can walk around and cool mm. couches you can sit in. So there's lots of, I'm conflicted on the layout, but I will say the thing that I know that I would want to do is have, I love um, bookstores that do the uh the adorable little note cards on the shelves of like our employees recommend this and they Mm -hmm. write up little blurbs like handwritten little blurbs about why they recommend that book and the sections you know you could find sections by you know topic and genre but you could also find sections by like what carol recommends and what you know sydney recommends and like like the people Mm -hmm. in the store have a voice and a personality and they kind of I love that aesthetic and I love that feeling of, oh, I'm kind of being welcomed into this little club, you know, little book club. Like like the personal Um, touch. I, I, I mean, even just as like somebody going there, I've seen bookstores like that too, where they're like, this is Kelly's thing. And I'm like, it's cool that you get to like contribute to sort of the the history of, of the store in a way I, I really love that. Yeah. There's a there's a place uh, really close to my house that I think is a chain that people might be aware of, uh, but it was the first time I'd seen it when I moved here to Denver. Um, it's called Second and Charles, 
and it's a ostensibly a secondhand store mm -hmm. uh, of wide variety. Uh, you can buy like used guitars and CDs and stuff there, but it is primarily a bookstore. And they also have new books, not just used books, but they have a lot of used books. And it is an awesome place. It's all, it's huge. It's a big warehouse like feeling to it. And I love the fact that when you walk in, there's books prominently displayed, new releases, like stuff on discount or stuff they've just gotten in. But there's also tchotchkes and weird kind of eclectic gifts. And I mean, not in a not in the same way you would get from a Barnes and Noble, even more kind of like local. I mean, there's some local to it, but it's more quirky than a mm. Barnes and Noble. It's like there's like action figures and, um, you know, t there's toys and, and stuff for kids. And I don't know, it just feels very it's like walking into a wonderland. It's like books are the feature, but there's all kinds of other fun things Hobby there. Things. There's like posters and, and kind of it's fun. I, I really enjoy that place, too. I love that. Yeah. For me, I feel like one of the things that I always wanted the most is is like a bookshop that is kind of a community hub. So it's yeah. more than just I think a lot of times with bookshops, they almost have like a reverence like libraries. There's a quietness to it. There's like a sort of solitude. And I would love to make, you know, LB's bookshop of the future is like a bustling spot that maybe there's like a quiet zone that you could come in or like like those sort of I, they have them a lot in like corporate offices, like little quiet pods. That, like if you want to like dampen the noise, you can like tuck in there if you want. Yeah. I want like a coffee shop. I want it like vibe of like a board game cafe. So maybe mm. there's like a library section of books that you can rent for just the day. Uh, but also like the extensive collection is like books for purchase, secondhand, new, whatever. But I want music on the weekends. I want like events for people to come together. I want people to host their book clubs there. Like love that. My bookshop, it's got co co coffees during the day, maybe a little libation at night. It's like a community zone. Uh, that would be my dream. I want to go to your bookshop. I think your bookshop is better <laughs> than my bookshop. Your bookshop just put my bookshop out of business. Look, no, it would acquire your bookshop and then give you the. You know, we would franchise. LB2 over here. LB2, exactly. It's perfect. <laughs> Lana's bookshop. Yeah, the sequel. <laughs> I love it. I um, I love it. The, I also love um, when they when a bookshop has re live like readings and authors yes, in and yeah. stuff. You know, um, I was fortunate enough to um, recently. I, I have friends that wrote this book about the MCU that uh, was a New York Times bestseller and is doing really, really well. And um, they were kind of doing a little book tour and coming through town and they asked me to moderate the panel for them uh, when they were at the bookstore that's local here, Tattered Cover Bookstore. And it was so awesome that like, I just loved being part of it. You know, I had nothing to do with the creation of the book, but I just got to, you know, be part of it and seeing the people that showed up and sitting in the audience and listening and asking questions. I love it. I love a, I love an author talk back and a, uh, a reading. I'm a sucker for that stuff. So yeah, I would want lots of stuff like that at my bookstore too. At yeah. my bookstore, that is a sub, su subset of your bookstore. That is. A <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can, you can pitch it to corporate and uh, we'll talk about. <laughs> we'll run up the chain. We'll run up the chain. <laughs> See what Ms. Bashinsky Bish thinks of this plan. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say this, like if anybody listening, particularly those in Seattle are like, that bookstore exists and it's right over here, baby. Well, let me know. Give, I want the hot tips for the community yeah. hubs. I haven't yeah. done that much exploring yet. Um, nice. uh, uh, well, there's a great bookstore in Seattle, famous, famous Powell's. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of it? Have you been? I don't know. Powell's bookstore I is really cool in Seattle. Yeah. Maybe I have been. I've definitely heard of it, but I, don't I can't believe- been. I was able to come up with the name of it right off I, the top of my head. You know, I, very, I, thought, I thought for sure I wasn't going to be able to do it. And then it just popped in. It's a really cool bookstore, though. It's uh, very yeah. famous. All right. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, we'd love to hear about your dream bookstores. Maybe there's something we didn't think about, like cotton candy. I don't know. What, what, what does a good <laughs> bookstore need to have? You tell us in the comments. Love it. Also, you can post in our Discord, which is 5 by 5 DLC on Discord. It has a books, book club section. Uh, and we always love getting emails from you as well at uh, dlcfeedback at gmail.com. All right, let's jump into the new one.
and start spoilers starting now for the prologue and chapter one of Midnight Tides, which is what we're covering today. Prologue. This prologue has multiple parts, multiple point of views. The meaty prologue. We start with new characters that we're going to have to figure out how to pronounce. <laughs> I'm tell sure it, you t- Jeff, you tell us who we started with. So I'm it, listening. So we are in the POV <laughs> of a very cool sounding character that I'm calling Scabandari. I feel also... like I feel like it's either you either see the word scab or you see the word band. So it's either scabandari or scabandari, right? Yeah. Those are the two contenders for me, but maybe there's even a third. I said scabandari. Scabandery. Scabandery. Scabandery, I I like saying more, but is not where my brain went. Scabandery. Yeah, (laughs) I think it's scabandery. Anyway, Mm -hmm. that's what we'll go with until Mr. Erickson inevitably corrects us. (laughs) Um, And uh, Silchus Ruin. Silchus, right? Silchus or Silchus? I would probably say Silchus. I I was tempted to say Silchus, but every time I've done that, I've discovered in these novels, it, it seems to me it's often exactly as it's written and not, you know, like there's a, ch, there's a CH, could be Silcus, Silcus Ruin, Silcus, Silcus Ruin. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I did say Silcus Ruin, but I'm, I'm good with Silcus. Anyway, they're two uh, pretty <laughs> badass characters, I would say. Uh, yes. Both of them soul taken, uh, Elent, I guess, is is the Elent the how we know that there's dragons? Um, are they the the Elent? They're, I thought they're that was the something. Adur. That, one's Adur, one's Andy. One's Adur, one's uh, one, one's Tisti Dur, one's Tist Andy, right? Yes. But I thought the Elent was the thing that specifically meant they were dragons, but I could be wrong about that. Oh, I. I don't. I don't know. I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't know what Elent is. I've seen the word a couple of times. I know it has to. With, I don't know what it has to do. I don't know anything. This Thanks is, for tuning in, everybody. We know nothing. Goodbye. Um, now, the, uh, this is, the beginning of the book is always the moment, especially because we took like a week off, where yeah. like my inability to retain names of things <laughs> versus <laughs> meanings of things is like so present. So I apologize for yeah. just the excellent content people are about to receive. The Elaine, I my brain says connection with like the darkness and shadow, and that's what mm. it has to do with. That that does sound right. Yeah, so that I think that's right. like the um, the wraiths are the elaint, I think. Oh, question mark. Okay. <laughs> anyway, the good news is these two awesome dragon bros are uh, are standing literally on piles of dead dinosaurs. Uh, our friends, the Kachain Chamale, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm sure I'm also mispronouncing. Um, uh, they, we've just we've just had an incredibly epic battle uh with with sky keeps falling out of the sky and massive armies f- with the Edur armies and the and armies and the uh, the, the uh, dinosaurs dinosaurs with sword arms ar- armies so cool um uh, but we didn't get to see any of it we just see the end of it and they were fighting together yeah the Edur like and and were fighting two together fronts. they're like we buds yeah. you go over there we'll go over here yeah. i think this scene here is really the beginning of their uh animosity Rift. toward each other right yes this is, we see uh you know kind of cut to the end here but we see uh scabandari betray silchus stab him right in the right in the back with a cool magic knife that makes chains wrap right because he knows he can't kill him because he's too mm-hmm. awesome can't be killed but he's gonna trap them with this cool uh a knife of magic. Yeah. I mean, even just like the first, literally the first sentence of like the little like date marker in the, the prologue, the yeah. first days of the sundering of Emerlon, I was like, ruh We're in it. <laughs> We're in it. Because we've Some, seen, mm. we've seen what that means, right? We know that uh, the, the, the breaking of the Warren crawled Emerlon uh, which shattered is the reason the whole whirlwind happened. Mm-hmm. We know the pieces and parts are all you know, the shatter. There, they've caused a lot of problems. Yeah. So this feels like the uh, origin of that chaos. Yeah. But 
the it has already shattered as we start. Uh, but we're kind of it's implied that Scabandari is the reason it shattered. So we don't quite That's, know exactly what went down. Yeah. Uh or, or like sort of what of the broader plot. We know that they had set people up, you know, we've got the sky keeps. Yeah. Uh, and in order to win the battle on the ground, they sent people up to just like besiege the sky keeps so that they couldn't like land or like support yeah. the ground troops in any way. And so all of awesome. those people were were slaughtered. Um uh, which is very cool. And this is, they're all fighting the, the matrons. Yeah. And uh, when, uh, is it Skabandari who, when he becomes, you know, his, his Chisider form, he's wearing like the skin of one of the matrons as like a cloak. Uh, so rad. Yeah. That's Skabandari. And it's so, it's so new that it still has natural oils on it. He's like, Ooh. he's like, guys, battle's not quite done. But I'm getting myself a sick cape. <laughs> just really quickly before I slaughter and skin you, would you just moisturize just once? I really wanted to retain that natural lust, natural luster. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going through the all the trouble of making myself a matron cape if it's gonna, you know, wear out quickly. <laughs> you know, they're built to last. You know, I'm put a little yeah. scotch guard on that bad boy. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yes, that incredibly cool that like we've we've seen the matrons in the previous novels and uh, our the matron that like hugged uh, Tuck a little too too tightly and mm -hmm. broke his bones every day. So we know the matrons are super powerful and, and awesome and and scary and and the fact that this dude killed enough of them to make himself a, a sick new cape, mm -hmm. ah, rad, rad. Um, but yeah, but then so Silchus is like. Hey, I'm gonna give you a new nickname. I'm gonna call you Blood Eye. And, he's like, why? Uh, he's like, he's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Why would that be? Just like, like you're the ones whose eyes are red. <laughs> what, what do you call me, Blood Eye? And then he stabs him. Mm -hmm. So, like, I mean, correlation is not causation. But this whole thing may have just been a bad, bad nickname. You know, <laughs> That's, that was my reading of the prologue. Is, he was like, not on my watch. Don't call me Blood nope. Eye. Stab. Nobody heard him say that. It's not out yet. Good. Yeah, yeah, man. He really missed an opportunity to be like, well, I'm going to call you Silk is st get stabbed. Like he had like a chance for a wicked comeback. And he, yeah. I'm going to call you the ball. Still just hole in the back. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> uh. yeah. Um, so it kills him. The chains in the that have come out of the of the of the dagger, the magic dagger, are going to capture him and bring him to an Azath tower, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And then we uh, we have Scabandari uh, thinking about how Silchus is um, actually one of um, Anamanda Rake's brothers. Brothers, and we know about Andarist. Andarist, we saw killed on. The uh, the island, the with island drone. of darkness. Yes, Avali. What is it called? Yeah, Drift Avali. Drift Avali. Thank you. Uh, so we know that brother's dead. Silchus, other brother, Andarist, Anamander, and Silchus. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we hear Anam Anamander called Anamandaris Irake or Iric or Irake. Anyway. I thought yeah. that was interesting. He had like a different name. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anyway, so that's interesting. I, uh, and, and everybody's like, Anamander, he disappeared. He, where, where is he? That guy disappears a lot, I'll just say. Or, yeah. Or, or is it the same disappearance that everybody's been talking about? It's not. Yeah, oh. right? It's multiple disappearances. Yeah, because right? this is yeah. way back in time. Um, he's, you know, he's just finding himself. He's... Uh, He's just, he's got a lot that he needs to discover of his heart and his soul. And I had a friend like that in college that every party, you'd be like, where did Joe go? Just, I, I was just that left. friend. <laughs> and I he'd was just go friend. on walkabout. He'd just walk the streets and then he'd show up three hours later. Like, oh, there's Anna Amanda Rake. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I think this is interesting that Silchus is in an Azath Tower. Uh, we don't know which one or where. I like Silchus. Cool. Yeah, he knows that. 
uh, oh no, so uh, Scamandar, he, he knows Silchus is like a powerful dragon such that he's like, well, he's not going to die after I stab him directly. Yeah. But then he's like, and now I've gotten all three of the brothers, except for that one who just disappeared. Definitely dead, though. Like, <laughs> yeah. No me, need uh, to worry about <laughs> him whatsoever. <laughs> to me, I'm like, that's a leap of logic, I feel like. You just stabbed a guy, and you were like, definitely won't kill him. Yeah. His <laughs> brother, though, that guy, weak. no need to worry. Just He's weak. Done and done. <laughs> Conscience is clear. Um. Uh, evil plan set in motion. <laughs> Unfoilable. <laughs> So, speaking of Azath houses, the second scene of the prologue, we uh, we check in with our old buddy Gothos. Yeah, Gothos, um, the jagged that we have seen numerous times. Uh, one of them inside an Azath house later later in the timeline. I, my understanding is this is early, earlier than anything we've seen in the novels so thus far, ish. Um, yes, with of the characters. earliest. Yeah. Uh, of the earliest, I think is a, you're right. Better way of saying it. Um, but he's hanging out on this glacier, just watching the betrayal happen. He's like, man, can't trust a dragon, you know? Can't trust a soul taken. <laughs> uh, and then an elder god shows up. An elder god that I don't think we've ever seen. We've heard talked about. Male, yeah, male. Male, the elder god of the seas shows up. It's like, splash, I'm here. <laughs> He's like, hey, what are you doing here, fish boy? Um, the so the thing I found interesting about this scene of watching Gothos sort of observe the battle, you know, he's sort of talking with Male, and he's just like, yeah, you know, here's what just happened. They're fighting. Bummer that there's this betrayal, but the uh, uh, and like the matrons, they were always sort of gonna lose or like he's like pontificates a bit about the thing that we just witnessed but he's like on the four curl of sail who we heard about from the talana Moss as like the previous tyrants right they were the mm -hmm. other big bads that they had to eradicate and they're like they're already on their way out for reasons that none of these people realize they think they're responsible they're not right he just sort of touches on that yeah and it's like anyway <laughs> like it's gone i'm like what is that little whisper of a yeah interesting yeah. piece or maybe he's just referencing the fact that the talan are, are somewhere doing damage to someone but i don't know that was like yeah. just an interesting very at arm's length huh, right anyway what's up male like yeah very interesting uh and they also both note that and amanda rake Surprise, surprise, is waking up somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that Osric or Osric is uh, going to stop him or going to get in his way or going to cause a problem and they're going to clash. Yeah. So, so here is something I also want to like quickly go check because I, it's Osric. Yeah. That is not Osric, Osric right? Or no, did I just I think it's, say it in, wrong? I think in the same way that it was Anamandarist uh, Irake. I yes. think that's they have like their old names, like as language on their name. change. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's okay. my that's my take. I could be completely wrong, but that's that's <laughs> what my reading was like. It's got to be the same dude, right? Because he's you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna say if they're not Stephen, buddy, Osric <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Osric, I'm not good enough at reading words <laughs> to picture two different characters there. Yeah. I that's all. I think I think I think it's variations on the name, but we'll find out. We'll find yeah. out. Um, so then the 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 next part of the prologue, we get a new character whose name is Withal. I thought actually pretty cool name, Withal. Um, Withal. Withal. No. <laughs> <Withal. laughs> I like the Withal. Withal. I Withal. A, a, doing a some tomb. cool thing. That i just doing a Withal. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Withal is <laughs> Withal is a uh, sword maker <laughs> that uh, walks up to the tent where, spoiler alert, the crippled god is hanging out, mm. and uh, there's some creepy stuff in the air, some incense, some <laughs> chihuly oil. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I whatever. Anyway, um, and uh, crippled god is like, hey. 
boom, you got servants. Look, cool. And he's like, oh, those Baccarat is like, not exactly. They're close, but they're smarter than Baccarat. They're called r- r- rind or rind, mape, and pule. Yeah. Love it. And he's like, uh, I want you to do something for me. And he's like, with all, like, nah, I don't know if I are. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't asking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, by the fact that you came here at all, you have uh, indebted yourself to me, and you owe me your existence. So we're all good. You, yeah, yeah. This is a, this wasn't a like cordial invitation. <laughs> um, he says, "I want you to make me a very particular sword." So, my question to you: Do you, do you think this is a sword we have already seen, or is this a new new sword? Because it feels like this. I don't know. I mean, it says it's in a specific year of Burn's sleep, but I think it's before. Most of those novels take place in the 1160s, right? And this was mm-hmm. 1159. I'm mm-hmm. actually noting this now. So it feels like this sword is earlier than what we've seen. So does a crippled god have a sick sword or has withal been working on it for years and, and we haven't seen yet. it yet? Mm, that's a great question. Well, actually, because of the transition of being like, oh, and Rake is like sleeping somewhere and then cutting to this scene, I briefly was like, is that Animander? He he is. He looks rough. (laughs) 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 Uh, Like. No, it's a cripple god. They call him fallen one. But part of me was like, he's got a special like just like animal brain. Like, what's the most special sword that's in my head? Uh, Uh, But then. Right. His sword is one that his dad made or right. whatever right yeah yes um i think that we haven't seen it because that other than the otaro blades and the warren sword whose name i can't remember dragnipur yeah dragnipur yeah uh i can't think of any other like hyper special yeah. swords i agree yeah so interesting interesting Inle- unless it's like the first otaro blade or something like that and he's like going to make it out of. Well, it just doesn't seem long enough ago for that. I, I feel like the Totoro braids have been around for longer than this, you know? Yeah. So I expected something that we we haven't, we haven't met yet. Yeah. Pretty cool. And especially because it's a prologue thing. I feel like that's going to come back later and we'll find out what that sword is. Mm-hmm. All right. Chapter one. We start uh, with kind of a tale of a giant that stood on a beach. I don't know. This one was like. Felt very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Abstracted almost, uh, like almost mythical. Metaphorical. metaphorical. metaphorical yeah. yeah. It, I agree. It definitely read like a tale, like the way that like you hear like stories, like old stories, and almost in the yeah. same way of like, you know. This is a very bad example, like Hansel and Gretel. Right. <laughs> like yes. here's like a, a fairy tale. It's yeah. A fairy tale, like a yeah. little bit with like a little bit horrific. I went on the beach and I laid down, and then the waves swallowed me at night and turned me into stone. And then the, my yeah. body's being eaten away slowly by the water. It's like it has that metaphorical feel of like there's a deeper lesson here. This is a story yeah. that's meant to teach you something. But because of the nature of the book, I'm like, no, that's just a thing that happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally happened. The dude can, laid down, yeah. turned into stone. Yeah. I can probably find metaphor in it, but I believe it's just a guy. <laughs> I'm not sure what to take out of it other than this uh, one must look in the darkness, look away to see. That look away to see thing is feels like it's going to be a theme for this I, novel. I really love that. Yeah, I do too. So, did you ever do that experiment when you're in school where they're trying to show you how peripheral vision works and they like take a really brightly colored object yeah. and then barely pull it into your line of yeah. sight and then it like the color pops into your vision? Yeah. I'm like, that is like a concept for like, oh, you want to see the real thing? You got to use the rods instead of the cones in your eyeball or whatever to like see like the stars that you'll see the brightest are the ones that are always on the outside of your eyes versus the yeah. ones you're looking at directly. And that's, yeah. uh, and I just, I think beautiful. Yeah. The, the metaphor of it too is, is really lovely in the, the, the notion. And I think it's probably going to be developed over the novel. Cause I feel like it's going to, I feel like troll even says it later, this notion of looking away to see that, that, that idea of if you concentrate too specifically on a thing, it's it, it obscures itself because 
your attention is too intense. You know, mm -hmm. you have to, you have to add in a little bit of, uh, context in order to get it. You know, that's kind of what I take from the metaphor, but we'll yeah. see how that develops over time. But I agree. It's a really killer sentence. And, and it felt evocative. It felt like very <laughs> resonant to me. I just watched a, an, an interview yesterday with a singer who I haven't listened to before. Jason Isbell. I know he's like a Grammy winner, but he has a song, I guess, that he just released called Don't Watch the Cast Iron Skillet. That's like the same, he, like what he was talking about in the interview I watched that I was like, interesting interview. And then like read the book and I was like, there's like weird parallels here. Hmm. Anyway, uh, it was it was a, a cool experience for me to be like, this is a, a resonant little thing. It was great. Yeah, I love it. Um, then we uh, we jump into our friend Troll Sengar. Uh, we get to see a little bit of Troll's origin story back before he was shorn, which is what, how we met him in the previous novel. Now he's, uh, you know, hanging out with his people and his family. Uh, but first, what we see is Troll witnessing a crime. He's watching uh, the Lethari. Lethari? Lethari. Lethari? Like lethargic. Okay. I like it. Uh, they are illegally hunting seals in the Idur territory, which is in violation of a treaty, evidently, and is bad because they've been through this big war and they were been low on supplies and food anyway, mm -hmm. and they were just going to get back to the place where food was plentiful, plentiful and yeah. sufficient. Um, but now the the Lethari are Lethari, 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 Lethari are um, are stealing stealing from them so yeah. he's like booking it blah, 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 blah. runs for three days and two nights non-stop that's, pre that's pretty strong pretty rad i bet he could do a tough mutter like no problem yeah yeah you're right i bet he could do it you could just <laughs> knock out a tough mutter <laughs> the uh, <laughs> um uh so, and this is the timing of it they have like a a great meeting that they're going to have in two moons so like two months or whatever away and so it, there's like the, the the complicated politics of like ugh, well we can't just let this happen but we're gonna start a war now again because of it. it's basically gonna destroy their chance at like actually right. having this this parlay to like try and get like a real peace between these two people so big bummer yeah yeah big kind of decision point of like are we gonna actually start we can't let these guys do this but also if we stop them it's going to make, lead to much worse stuff mm -hmm. for everybody. And we we were introduced to Troll's uh, siblings, uh, brothers uh, Fear. It's a rough name to give your kid, by the way. What are you <laughs> going to name this one? Troll. What's the next one? Fear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Feels like you have some issues with parenthood. So you learned a lesson <laughs> of some kind, I guess. <laughs> Actually, fear was the first the one. The first one. Maybe that makes more sense. If you name your firstborn fear, you're like, I don't know about this whole parenthood thing. <laughs> fear. I should have named my kid fear. <laughs> fear, and then my second one is confirmation. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, fear is the older brother, then troll, then... Uh, Who's the third the one? Bin, bin, Binadis? Binadis. And he's, you know, he's another guy on a walkabout. He's got yeah. the, he's, he's got the, a little, a little rake in them in the sense that he's like, yeah, it's mountain time. He's, yeah. He, yeah, uh, he, he, yeah, he, he, no, he wanders the earth. Uh, and then Rulad is the youngest brother who is sparring as we meet him. And he is betrothed to Mayan. Who he's, is? What's he's that? Not, he's not betrothed. Fears betrothed. Oh, fear! You're right. Sorry. Fears. He's but he's. See, flirts. you're talking. You're talking about the exact issue that Troll's seeing. I know. Walking the line. I know. Uh, yes, you're right. Rulada, the youngest, flirts with Mayan, uh, even though she is betrothed to Fear, and uh, she isn't isn't smacking it down. You know, mm -hmm. she's not saying no. She's not saying that's not cool. She's like. <laughs> That's my co that's my coquette. <laughs> that's, 
<laughs> it's a good coquette. See, that's so interesting. The way that it's described, I see everybody as having like completely straight faces, <laughs> except for Rulad, who's like, hey, what's up, ladies? <laughs> and she's like being respectful. She's like, I'm here to witness the sparring because as is my responsibility. And then they silently walk away. And fear is like, hello, betrothed. <laughs> And uh, yeah. I don't know yeah, why I picture it that way. That relationship. There's no. Oh yeah, the Hello, spark. Betrothed. It's electric. It's electric. Yeah. Uh, well, but Troll basically calls out the fact that Mayan is like not shutting it down. She's, you know, he's like the, fa- the fact that she, she entertains it at all yeah, right. is like is already like yeah. even one toe over the line. Yeah. It, it, the based exactly on what you just said, the the sense that I get is that. She kind of likes Rulat a little more than fear. Yeah, you know? that's yeah. the vibe I got too. Yeah, I mean, you got to face your fear. That's the problem. <laughs> anyway, Troll is very worried about this because you know he doesn't think it's his place to do anything about it. He doesn't. He doesn't know what to say to anybody. Uh, interesting dynamic immediately set up. Uh, but Troll goes to his dad, Tomad, and says. Uh, I saw his dad's playing a cool card game or a dice game or something uh, with some some other nobles. Uh, some kind of board game. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sick. He's playing Little Settlers of Catan. Little like, Cones of Dunshire. Do you, do you have any sheep for brick? <laughs> 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 I get some, get some sheep for brick. Anyway, um, a troll <laughs> comes running in. We haven't done this in a while, so we're a little loopy uh, today. <laughs> I hope you get, you're, get, you're probably getting that. Um, he, he runs in. He's like, uh, 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 I've been running for three days and two nights. Uh, 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 and I saw them steal our seals. Well, he, well, he walks in and I like the sort of the body language. They mentioned it a couple times as like a size society. So as he's walking into town uh, to go back a little bit, you know, Troll like puts his hand up in such a way that it like implies I'm not stopping to chat. That's right. Which uh, I wish I had that <laughs> as a society. <laughs> I wish I had that so bad. This uh, is why it's being a novel. We need to see the exact movement so we so, can replicate it in our lives. And then be like, hello, internet. Hello, world. When I'm walking to my desk and I have a meeting, I'm going to do this so that you know I'm not stopping to chat and it's not being rude. Um, I want it. But then also, you know, he gets into the place where his father is and he puts his hand on the pommel of his weapon and that immediately signifies, I got news and it's bad. Yeah. Such that cool. his. Uh, oh, and I don't think we, we t- touch upon this necessarily. So Troll's out there. He witnesses the flirtation. And in order to like deescalate the, the tension, yeah. uh, he invites Rulad who has never seen battle. He's young enough that he's he wasn't part of the wars previously. He's a, a bloodless pup. Yeah, call unblooded. Him later. Yeah. Unblooded. Um, he invites him to take part in this conversation, which is like a great honor because he is like an untested warrior. And when he gets in there and he puts his hand on the pommel and all his dad's friends are like, well, gotta go, Tomad. Uh, catch you later. Um, and his younger brother, I just love that. He's like, <gasps> it's like, He's so <laughs> excited and shocked and, and probably yeah. dismayed that there's go like to the meeting at the council. <laughs> and immediately he's like, Papa! and his dad's like, get out of here, man. Give the news. And he's like, oh, man, dad ruined it. Like instantly ruined it. <laughs> yeah. The kid has no impulse control. And I just like I like the dynamic and the yeah. unspoken, like the subtext that happens between all these things. It's great. Totally cool. Yeah. I, I, Erickson's so good at establishing these completely unique cultures so quickly and so completely that you just immediately grok all of the the little particulars of the social dynamics you know mm-hmm. in in a, in the culture and how you know what what is what is acceptable what is unacceptable what is tradition I, it's it's just so cool how he's done it over and over and over again with introducing us to these very particular subcultures really I enjoy it very much. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So the Midnight Council is going to happen the next day. Troll is unable to sleep. He gets up. He walks along the beach. There's a white crow, which is interesting because the Idur think white is is an evil color mm-hmm. uh, in the way sort of opposite to how, you know, our culture kind of thinks, you know, white hat, black hat, black hat is the 
is the bad guys. White Hat is the good guys. It's, it's opposite because they are children of Mother Dark. They are they come from the darkness, uh, which is awesome. I think is a, another really cool fantasy mm -hmm. idea is that white is the ugh, is the yeah. bad color. Um, go ahead. Nothing. I felt like you were going to say something. No. Okay. Um, so, uh, the, he, he's walking on the thing. Fear comes up to troll and, um, they talk about the, uh, the previous war and, uh, Hanan Mosog, who is the guy they need to report to. Uh, and they've, they, you know, talk about how the Idur are bitter. Uh, and they, they say that Scabandari blood eye was betrayed, which is interesting because like we see in the prologue him as the betrayer mm -hmm. and then they're discussing him being betrayed by his kin. And that led to the loss of the hounds and the throne of uh, Karald Emerlon mm -hmm. uh, being lost as well, which we know is on Drift Avali now. Mm -hmm. And we know that the nickname stuck. <laughs> That's true. Despite all his stabbing, you can't get away from old blood eye. <laughs> Yo, you, 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 sometimes you, you do the sticking, sometimes you get stuck. That's just how it goes. <laughs> so they head over to the Midnight Council. Uh, and then immediately we transition into a different character, new character. Which I thought, was, it, it's so interesting how he does that. It's just like seamless. And all of a sudden yeah. I'm, a, I'm in a new character and I didn't even, I'm not, I didn't, there was no seam, seamless, <laughs> what I just said. Yeah. Uh, uh, how are we going to pronounce this guy's name? Udinas? <laughs> Udinas? I think Udinas. Udinas? Okay. I like it. Udinas is a slave who uh, was uh, used to be a sailor on a ship that got caught uh, stealing pigs from the Tistidur. Mm-hmm. And uh, all of them, it's so, such a cool little backstory. Like all of the officers uh, got killed, but they take all the sailors and they put them into, you know, indentured servitude. Uh, and then they treat them really well. And so Udinas is like, this is a sweet gig. I didn't I, even like being a sailor. I love that. Yeah. It's like he just like the way that it's teed up being like, because I'm a sailor, of course, I'm never allowed on the sea again. And it's like, oh, that is a, that is a bummer. But then he's like, but that I never liked it anyways. And <laughs> yeah. now I eat lots of food and like I do this work. It just is like, oh, well, you know, power to you, Udinas. Things worked out. It all yeah. worked out. Treat yourself. Every, everything's coming up Udinas, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so he's uh, he's a guy that repairs nets and just, you know, lives the life. Re repairing nets, being happy. Mm -hmm. um, and he's got a crush. Yeah. A crush on a magic girl. A feather witch. The feather witch. Now, little tip to anybody listening. If the girl you have a crush on is called the feather witch, maybe try to like somebody else. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or I just at least expect that at some point you might lose your entire deltoid in an invisible battle. <laughs> you know what I always say, Lana? There's more witch in the sea. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Uh, you know, you've been saying that. I you've have. been saying I that. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he uh, he watches Troll and Fear um, head out to the to the Midnight Council, and he's like, oh, "Man, I, I really hope these do her, uh do <laughs> destroy beat all the people I used to be part of because I, I like it here. My old life sucked so." The Lothari, I'm, I'm not going to root for them, even though I am technically one of them, mm -hmm. which I thought was probably interesting, too. Um, and he says, like, you know what? They, they actually, all they care about is gold and power, and they're lame. I like it here. Yeah. Oh, I Edor. like that he sort of paints that picture. Of, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's not to, like, immediately be like, mm, look away and see, but, like, while he's with the Lothari and he's stealing pigs and doing whatever, uh, you know, being a part of this other society that even though he's like in debt to them, he's like treated well and, you know, well fed and around people that he likes. And they're obviously allowed to like 
you know, practice their, their rituals and things. They like, they have their little community here. Yeah. It seems to me like, yeah, you've added context to the life that you had before. And now you can see clearly that living a life that's all about like pillaging and gold from what we know about it. Obviously this is a one-sided story right now. Right. Um, is, uh, it's, uh, like almost like the first and immediate instance of look away to see clearly to me. Totally. Very, oh, very good. Yes. Yes. And I feel like that's going to be the, the central metaphor that's going to go through this whole novel. And I, I'm delighted by it. Mm -hmm. um, so then another slave comes up and he's like, Hey, I saw the feather, witch casting at night. And I was like, Oh no, that's not good. <laughs> and then he sees a pale shape flying in the air and he's scared of it. This is what I thought was so interesting. Because I would have thought, you know, Troll's sitting on there on the beach with fear and sees that crow and he's like, we think that's bad usually. Yeah. Anyway, time to go to the meeting. He like doesn't bat an eye. And meanwhile, Lothari, Udinas. who I can only, or Lothari, Udinas, Udinas. Yeah. I can only imagine that the Lothari people don't necessarily like follow Mother Darkness. They're just like a people, merchants, right. whatever they are. He's like, is that a white crow? <laughs> <laughs> and like oh, hustle, no. hu hustles yeah. over there. So yeah. I don't know what the broader meaning is, but interesting that it means something to him and not to troll. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> so we head over to the Midnight Council. Uh, all the most important people are there. There's this Marood tribe, which is interesting. I love the little, the little tidbit of backstory between how the Marood tribe got subjugated into the you know trolls uh under trolls leadership of his of of hanan mosag they say hanan mosag who is like this slight not imposing not scary looking dude like snuck into the chief of the maroon tribes tent in the middle of the night by himself and then the next morning they're like yep they follow us now and nobody knows <laughs> what happened it's the coolest thing i was like oh that is the raddest little story of like what happened in that tent? It's like, to me, it was like almost like a Lando Calrissian moment in my brain where it's like, or like a, like a Han Solo situation. We know that he's doing things and you know, the solo movie, notwithstanding, it's like <laughs> things happen. He made him happen. And now he's here. It, you know, his reputation precedes him kind of vibe. Yeah. Very cool. It, 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 yeah. So, Everybody's like, hey, Troll saw some things in the bay. Uh, Troll, well, why don't you tell everybody? And Troll's like, sick. Here, here I come. Steps up on the dais. And he's like, I saw 19 Lothari ships. And everybody's like, 19? 19? You said some. <laughs> That's more than some, my guy. <laughs> <That's> scary. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. And uh, 70 men on the shore collecting uh, the seals. Uh, he's, he's like... I was so pissed. I threw him a spear at him. Mm. And they're like, does that mean we're at war? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, that's bad, but kind of good. Yeah. Kind of awesome that you did that. Like <laughs> I wouldn't have let it. I mean, I would have been pissed too. And I wouldn't have let that happen, but yeah. Also, uh, Han Hanan, uh, are we at war? And I love the Hanan Mossog's like response or plan is like, okay, here's the thing. We can't let this stand. They are, a-holes and we all know it <laughs> and we're not letting them steal our sh seals <laughs> seal stealing revealed uh and but we're but we what we can't do is like overtly go to war because that would be also very very bad mm. so we're not going to do anything about it i know i know we all want to do something about it i know i know we're all we're all so angry <laughs> But we're not going to do anything about it right this second. First, we're going to go get me a six spear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like I, during like, like the, I forget who we're witnessing it through. I think it's through troll or just like sort of the general audience. And this guy's talking and he's like, he threw his spear and everybody's like, yeah, he did. He's like, but now he's unarmed. And everybody's like, but that's bad though. <laughs> and he's like, you all go out there, you throw spears. And they're like, yeah. And he's like, but then you're all unarmed. And and then I'm like, oh, like take him on this roller coaster. Yeah. Praise. And, and then you get a free Frogert. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> but the Frogert is also cursed. That's bad. <laughs> but like, 
I like that. It's, it, it, yeah, you know, it's called out the ready. It's like people are like listening so intently that, and they understand that he's going to get to a point that nobody says the obvious thing is we got a lot of spears. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, the <laughs> troll is like, Ooh, like we make spears know, literally man. all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like our whole thing is making spears. It's like, okay, I trust you're going somewhere. The spears is actually not an issue, but please continue. <laughs> It's very funny. Um, <laughs> I, I agree. That was really funny. The, <laughs> then uh, he's like, Hanan Mosak is like, what we're really going to do, what we're really going to do, we're not going to throw any spears at him because that would be bad. We're going to unveil Kerald Emerlon, full unveil. And they're like, the full nobody fully unveil? unveils it. Yeah. I... I and he's like, like they'll be in the dark. They'll be confused. They'll kill each other. We'll yeah. kill them. But it's not until we're going to do the full unveiling of the warrant to like show them what's up. Yeah. Uh, very exciting. I think the only time yeah. we've seen the full unveiling is is Rake in Dead House Gates, but like right before he disappears, right? He unveils the warrant. But we don't we don't really yeah. see it. Right. It like happens and they're like, there's an unveiling back there and people kind of yeah. are in the midst of like the chaos. But that's the only other time I think we've yeah, gotten the full, like even heard, like seen the words, like the full unveiling of the Warren. Yeah. Uh, which I means- agree. It does sound, it sounds awesome. And the fact that everybody is f- frightened and also titillated by it is, yes. is, is very exciting for what may come. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we're back with uh, Udinas, who's uh, hang, uh, heading over to the barn where Old Featherwitch is uh, doing a, uh, doing a, a, a casting of the tiles. Yeah. And uh, she is like, hey, let me give you a huge info dump. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, okay, here comes the ritual. <laughs> all right. Here, I'm laying it all out. Boom, 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 boom. Um, <laughs> which I actually loved. Uh, the like, there's three fulcra and there's errants and then there's extra fulcra and then there's holds and I was like holds oh yeah we heard about holds mm-hmm. holds are super important they're what became the houses holds but we only kind of were just like told that little tidbit we didn't really find out more about the holds it mm-hmm. feels like this is where we're really gonna find out what's the deal with the holds because she literally lays it all out uh the the whole structure of the holds. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before anything else can happen, she's lifted off the ground by an invisible demon. Uh, which, you know, this whole scene, I was like, was that the crow? Yeah, I, I thought that too. But then clearly it is not. It's clearly it's not the crow. But like, yeah. But does like the crow be friends with the wyvall? Like it was the crow, the mm. just the omen of the wyvall? Like yeah. they didn't like talk about any connection there, but they talked about like the Wyval when he was near it, I thought that it was something similar, but like the, when he was touching it, like the scales were also like a white color or something like that. Maybe it's just invisible the whole time. Ignore me. But I assume that that was like the connection. It was like something bad's happening. Yeah. Like they it knew. Maybe it was a harbinger there. or, you know, like yeah, said, a yeah. bad omen that then was, you know, paid off by, but the, I love how this sequence played out with the invisible attack and nobody knows what's happening to her, but he immediately sees talons pop through her shoulder, you know, like a a wound from a talon. He's like, birds don't have talons or something else. Something else doesn't have talons. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, then runs upstairs and leaps at an invisible shape. It's just a rad scene, just a cool action sequence where he leaps onto it and he's like, okay, I got this tool that I use to to tend the ropes. I'm mm-hmm. gonna just s- s- slash into this thing. But meanwhile, he's being ripped apart. Uh, but but you know, his love for the feather witch makes him hold on tighter. It's yeah, cool, cool yeah. stuff. I also, you know, the scene is he, like his shoulders being demolished, but eventually the the wyvall is able to get like a good enough like turn and grip on him that it says like his like his vision and his mouth just fills with blood and that's like yeah. the end and i was like dang he really went all in on that sacrifice and i was yeah. very delighted with like the next couple like a couple scenes later in the next scene even that mm-hmm. he he wasn't just instantly killed but right. uh very like immediately interesting backstory to this guy who's left his people 
Yeah. And I don't know if those are like his skills as a sailor that just like let him over. It really was just the power of love drove him to knowing this thing would be there, this shape, et cetera. It's uh, so much about this character already that is like, well, he's a cool guy. What a guy. I, I, I agree. I immediately liked him. I thought that sequence was rad and his sort of selflessness. And even later when she's like, you love me, right? And he's like, yeah. She, he's like, yeah, I know it's not going to work out, but what am I going to do? I love you. You know, I just thought mm -hmm. that was, it's cool. Um, anyway, but jarringly to my mind, we then immediately go back to the, to the council. And I, <laughs> I know that it was in a barn and, and in the council and they're not near each other, but I kept waiting for people to be like, there's an, a demon attack <laughs> over there in the barn. We should all go. Uh, but that did not happen. Instead, uh, Hanan Mosag is like, hey, uh, I need you to do something for me. I had a vision and it was of a sweet gift for me. Well, well, sorry. First, he like he's like meeting adjourned except for you sons of one dude stay here. So right. everybody else evacuates the area. And then he's just troll the Sengar brothers. Yeah, in all the, the Sengar bros. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then and he's, he's like, like, I need you guys to do something for me. And it's get me a present. <laughs> <laughs> I also like, he's like, one sec, I'll find it for you. And then like, he sits there and he like immediately goes back into his mind's eye to be like, it's yeah. uh, trying to find directions. <laughs> Got the map quest in his brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's like, I need you guys. <laughs> I love this scene too. He's like, all right. Fear, Troll, I need you guys to pick two other people. And Fear's like, I, I picked Theranos and Minnick. <laughs> Troll's like, ah, dang it. <laughs> Those are the good brothers. We all know that. Do ah. you want to think about it a second? No, 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 no. I like those guys. I hang even, out with those guys. And even like, what's the name? Han Hanas? He's yeah, like. Hanan Mossad. Hanan is like, great pick. Yeah, well chosen. <laughs> the other brothers. <laughs> yeah. Uh and uh uh and then we 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 jump back to Udinas. Uh then he, you know the, he's unconscious and the feather witch is talking to him in his mind. I love the scene. This is so rad. They're being healed by Sengar's mom, Uruth. And Meanwhile, Feather Witch is preventing them from being fully healed and come back to consciousness. She's like, I can't, I, we, we can't get like completely healed yet because this is, there's some bad stuff happening. This mm -hmm. is not good. I feel a weird corruption in Corald Emerlon. She's healing us with Corald Emerlon, but it doesn't feel right to the old Feather Witch. Mm -hmm. And I like that she's like, when you wake up, you got to just be confused. Yeah, be cool. Be, be, be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Yeah. Don't tell her I, you, I talk to you like this. Yeah. Also, you love me, right? Yeah, I knew you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's just an awesome moment of like, I'm preventing us from being healed completely right yeah. now with my magic. Uh, just a neat idea. A neat um, idea, especially because like the payoff being the next scene of them like starting to come to consciousness and we get like the perspective from the uh like trolls people the, yeah from troll the, the, yeah you well they got the this troll and it's ruth and i can't i don't Hanan, know why Hanan, Hanan, Hanan coming in and being like they're really like resisting that healing huh and they're like yeah and they're like but like what does that mean or whatever and she's like there's two options like it's either she, like as I'm healing her, she's hiding her power from me. And it's that if she can do that, she's way more powerful than I am. Yeah. Or she's like a feeble witch. And he's like, well, it's got to be the latter. There's no, it's literally <laughs> impossible that she'd be super powerful. Okay. We got <laughs> exactly. to put a stop to the rituals because this is just getting silly. It's like so in the tone of like, stop it. And not at all in the tone of like, yeah. Yeah, you know, feather witch be powerful. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, there's two two things could happen. Either we don't need to worry about it at all. <laughs> this is how by the way, this is how I handle every appliance that breaks in my house <laughs> with, with my wife. She's like, "Oh my god, the dishwasher broke." I'm like, "Okay, there's two things that could be happening. Either we don't even need to worry about it at all and it'll just fix itself magically <laughs> or 
it's way more powerful than me. <laughs> I'm going to have to <laughs> hire somebody to come in here and fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's always that that second one anyway um <laughs> so they uh they do wake up uh Udinas has this cool gold blood on him which is i thought was rad it's like an invisible invisible demon with gold blood yeah very it's cool rad. but also they're like he could be poisoned by it yeah that's not good yeah how much blood did he did he get in his mouth yeah <laughs> You know what? That's not a bad idea. Yeah, get the um, pump. Get the pump. Yeah. And as he, as they're leaving, or as as Hanan Mosag is leaving, one of his wraiths pauses at the doorway and looks back at them. And that's how we end the chapter. One of the details we missed about the leader is that they describe his shadow as like standing upright with him. Right. And that... His connection is like so powerful with darkness. Or sh- I'm gonna get darkness and shadow. <laughs> I have to just sit down and like read the difference between the two of those things so I say it right. I, it's gonna be important in this book. I feel it. Yeah, it's important in the last <laughs> one, and I just was like, eh, he's one of the two. <laughs> but in this case, I assume, I assume it's they say Mother Darkness, but it's talking about his shadow. That's the right. confusion. Anyway, his connection is so powerful that they say only like the most powerful people can can have. Like summon a wraith to just exist in the shadow of his body at all times as like his personal bodyguard that's there. Yeah. And so at the end of this book, it's like s- such a present entity that he leaves and the sh- the shadow itself turns and like nobody knows where it's looking. They just know that it's scoping out the room and then pieces. Well, it looks out. at one of the people in the room. Like it. It says it, we don't. I, it's, it says we don't know where it's looking because its eyes don't have. Like aren't right. There's no pupils but or something. The sense that I got was that it was picking out somebody in the room. We don't know who, but it was mm-hmm. picking out somebody in the room as being, I don't know, interesting, scary, problematic. What I don't know what, but there was some. It did it, this it, thing. Some, so yeah, some implication of the the shadow being like you, but we don't know who. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which was which was a cool way to end. Yeah. Um. So here we are, chapter one. We finished. Prologue, chapter one, meaty stuff. What is your feeling about where we start Midnight Times? So, uh, again, with this series, we are in a completely new place, new culture, new time. I feel like there's more connections to stuff yeah. that we are familiar with already than there was at the beginning of House of Chains. But what do you? how are you feeling? I'm feeling excited. Yeah, I'm feeling there's so many interesting little pieces already, but like – Interesting little pieces that, like you said, I feel like a connection to something, even though I don't like quite know. There's like names, things are familiar, even the holds. I'm like, okay, what's the beast thrown? Oh, they had those puppy dogs. Like, yeah. there's like little shout out, like a lot more little shout outs to things that I'm already aware of in the world. Um, and honestly, just like the community's excitement and how many people are like, this is the one, this is my fave. Having, yeah, no, I'm excited about that too. <laughs> the previous book, like vastly go past all of my wildest expectations i cannot wait to be in the community hype that i just feel like i will be so yeah but like and i feel like how many things i feel like my brain is like stacking up already that are familiar is like a great foundation for for setting the rest of that story to get yeah. into a very big payoffs baby yeah and you know we had so much fun with carsa orlong at the beginning of the last novel um, not even knowing how he at that time in the first few chapters of that of that book, not even knowing how he fits in because we didn't know who he was, you know that he was Toblakai. Um, this time we're kind of focused, or at least at this moment in the in the book, we're focused on this character that we already like, right? Yeah. I already like Troll Sengar, and I'm already curious about. I feel like this is going to explain why he was shorn. What that? Because right now he's super respected in the community, right? Yeah. He's like, hey, he's, dude, get up on the t- table and tell everybody why we should all go to war, uh, you know? And, yeah. and from going from that place to not only are you uh, ostracized from our community, but we're going to chain you to this place and make you die, you know? I also think that it, like Troll, I guess, travels with Onrak, but like I like the sort of connections as well with like, you know, he has some sort of physical representation of like the kills that he had in battle. Like yeah. there's a lot of, 
you know, that uh, uh, Karsa ish energy to him. And it makes yeah. me interested to see if they meet, if they clash, if they get along and they're like, Hey buddies, we get you. And also, you know, the Idur have been introduced as this almost, uh, we're all surprised that they're not completely wiped out. Right. Yeah. Like they've, there's traces of the Idur that are still around that we've seen in the previous novels, but here we're thrown into the Idur when they're, I don't know about thriving, but they're plentiful, right? They're, they have a whole community. Um, mm-hmm. So it's interesting to see Idur culture. I, I'm into it. I, I don't know where we're headed next, but um, I'm into it. It's also but, interesting because like, uh, you know, other than Troll, all the other Idur that we've met have been like villainous, mm. like Scamandari. Yeah. Initial betrayal, the Idur on the ship that just had those headless bodies. Right. There's just kind of like, and those, yeah, we never got to really hear them talk, really, <laughs> other than right. being like, bow to me. Um, like there's there's been like a, that villainous edge to them. They're trying to get back this throne. They're the bad guys with the with like we got Crocus and Absolute. People were already rooting for on the other side. And this is now we're living with them. We're seeing them they're here and other than the fact that you know the fact that they're so here and so plentiful is is likely because because scabandari's betrayal um it's uh they're you know they're the 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 current good guys and i'm interested to see if and when that perspective ever shifts yeah and they're the ones that are like trying to get the the throne of shadow back on drift avali and they're the ones that killed and darist right um, so they're actively trying to, uh, unite the, sh- the fragments of Corral de Emerlon in, in, you know, in our, I guess, present timeline. I don't even know if that's an applicable phrase, but, uh, <laughs> the timeline that we are most familiar with, I guess. Yeah. Um, and also there's all that stuff from even earlier in the series about how they're sort of related to the Bargast. Do you remember that stuff? Yeah. No. Uh, I don't right, they're, they're uh, and the Maranth, the Maranth and the Bargast are kind of related to the Maranth and the Bargast are related to the original to Talan Amas before they changed before the bow. So the Maranth are related to the Bargast, but they yeah. all were, uh, they all interacted with the Tistan Anur, which is like what they called the Tisti Dur. Oh. Yeah. See, this is I remember because there's twist, been like two. Remember the Black Moranth twist. I'm just reading this, by the way. I'm not remembering yeah. it because I wouldn't have been able to, but I'm reading it on this little uh summary. Uh Twist revealed that the Bargast came to Moranth Wood and found Tisty Doer living in a crawled Emerlon fragment. Yeah. And the Tisty Doer died, but they helped shape the Bargast into the Moranth they are today. So yeah, so they're they're related, but not like genetically. Right. So, right. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's see. This is. But it seems like we like the Moranth and we like the Bargast, and the Tisty Door kind of helped them become what they are. So complicated, interesting as everything in these novels is. Yeah. I yeah. I remember like two episodes or something that I was trying to like trace those lineages back and like doing a poor job of it. But yeah, great summary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how great it is, but. I, I think it's it's cool that we're learning more about the Tisty Door because I think that's uh, it's going to be a big piece of the puzzle. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's do our uh, favorite uh, passages from this section. I think we each have one. Yeah. I have uh, only one. Yeah. And again, I, I feel like this has happened to me a couple times with like the books where I'm like, I'm trying to get my bearings. And so my favorite sentence is actually the, like the first, it's the... I feel like it was almost just like a breath of fresh air getting back into it and being like, oh, yeah, I'm snuggling back into this familiar world that I'm excited to explore. So it's like the first chunk of the prologue. Awesome. From the twisting smoke-filled clouds, blood rained down. The last of the sky keeps flame-wreathed and pouring black smoke had surrendered the, sc- or, yeah, surrendered the sky. Their ragged descent had torn furrows through the ground as they struck and broke apart with thunderous reverberations, scattering red-stained rocks among the heaps of corpses that covered the land from horizon to horizon. 
the great hive cities had been reduced to ash-layered rubble, and the vast towering clouds above each of them had shot skyward with their destruction. Clouds filled with debris and shredded flesh and blood now swirled in storms of dissipating heat, spreading to fill the sky. So awesome. Yeah, that that first scene was so vivid in my imagination. And the way he stands there, um, uh, Scavendari st- stands there and is like waiting, looking out. And, and then you see the other dragon like pierce through the clouds. Mm-hmm. Uh, or not clouds, smoke, you know, like the, yeah. this, it, it, it's such a cool image in my head. And yeah, like the way that the, the, the sky keeps fell and ah, just a, such good writing. Beautiful mm-hmm. prose. Um, my section is from uh, when uh, the Feather Witch is giving us our big lore dump mm. uh, because I was very impressed because this is, you know, this is a big list of things that we had previously been unaware of. And yet the writing is still so vivid to me and so beautiful, so poetic. Um, so, you know, she, so here, here, here it goes. It says, Udinas, like all Lothari, knew the sequence and the forms. First would come the three fulcra known as the realm forgers. And then here's the sequence that I love. Fire, the silent scream of light, the very swirl of the stars themselves. Then dolmen, bleak and rootless, drifting aimless in the void. And into the path of these two forces, the errant, bearer of its own unknowable laws. It would draw fire in dolmen into fierce wars, vast fields of destructions, instance upon instance of mutual annihilation. But occasionally, rarely, there would be peace made between the two contestants, and fire would bathe but not burn, and Dolman would surrender its wandering ways and so find root. Um, awesome. Awesome. I love that the the fire uh, bathing in not burning was def- like one of the t- like the smaller sentences that stuck in my my brain. Love it. So good. Love so it. good. So we're in it, folks. We're in it. Midnight tides. Uh, we'll be back next week with two more chapters, chapter two and three. Thanks again to all the folks in the Discord that put together our roadmap for reading episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are so so grateful for all that hard work and and care that you put into doing that. Um, it, as it, always, you can, we love your comments, your, your, your questions, your suggestions for topics that we start the show with. Please keep those coming. DLC feedback at gmail.com or DLC uh, five by five DLC, uh, discord channel, or, um, right here on the YouTube comments. We love all of it. We'll see you next time until then. You gotta, you gotta dance it out. When the world's too dark of a place to be And you need an escape from reality Open up those pages and start crying your fantasy Whatever genre you please And join a book club Cause you won't read it on your own Join a book club So you'll be held accountable It's just some means of an but you're doing